Welcome to EasyLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at nitrogen and its compounds and our focus today will be nitric acid. So we are going to look at the laboratory preparation of nitric acid and also the large scale uh, preparation of nitric acid and then we'll do a few questions. So nitric acid is a monobasic acid so when you talk about monobasic, it means it has one replaceable hydrogen atom, but it is referred to as one of the strong um, water or aqua 40. It looks, the formula is like this. So you can see it has only one replaceable hydrogen atom. It's a compound of hydrogen, oxygen, as, and nitrogen, as you can see from the formula. And it can be prepared in the laboratory by the reaction of um, concentrated sulfuric acid with potassium nitrate. So you can see from the procedure, some potassium nitrate are put in a retort stand. As you can see, the retort stand is shown. And then after it's done that, some concentrated sulfuric acid is added just enough to cover the nitrate and then it's heated so you can see this is one of the conditions that we require for this reaction to occur and the apparatus are all glass and the reason why they are all glass is because nitric acid attacks rubber that's the reason why we don't use rubber so the neck of the retort flask is inserted into the flask that is kept cool continually under running water so this is where the nitric acid is collected so you can see or the, the round bottom flask where the nitric acid is being collected is, is a tap of water that keeps it um, condensing the gases. The cold water running over the collection uh, flask is meant to condense the hot fumes of nitric five acid. Some of the observations we note from the reaction is that fumes of nitric acid are usually observed. So when you look at the reaction, it is potassium nitrate plus sulfuric acid is a displacement that occurs to form potassium hydrogen sulfate and nitric acid. So if we were to use lead 2 nitrate for this reaction instead of potassium nitrate, this means the reaction would stop because the insoluble lead 2 sulfate would be formed, which is an insoluble salt which coats um, the lead to nitrate and prevent further reaction. So you produce less amount of nitric 5 acid. So this is the reaction for the formation of the insoluble salt. So the fumes of nitric acid usually appear brown. The reason why they appear brown is because of the presence of nitrogen oxide that is formed by the decomposition of nitric acid. So that nitrogen oxide is the one that causes it to be are brown in color. So when nitric acid decomposes, you can see from the equation, it forms nitrogen oxide, oxygen, and water. This nitrogen oxide, remember, is brown in color. So pure nitric 5 acid is colorless but may appear yellow due to the presence of nitrogen oxide, as we have said, and it can be that color can be with, removed by blowing air through the acid. So Fuming, as fuming nitric acid boils at 83 degrees Celsius and is 99% pure, while uh, concentrated nitric acid is only 70% in that percent of water. It is usually stored in dark bottles. This is because in exposure to light, it decomposes to nitrogen 4 oxide, um, oxygen, gas, and water. So this brings us to the previous equation that we had seen earlier on. So the reaction in the retort stand is a typical displacement reaction in which a more volatile nitric 5 acid uh, is displaced by a nitrate by a less volatile sulfuric acid. So nitric acid is still over because it's more volatile than sulfuric acid. That's the reason why this reaction occurs in this equation. Next, we look at now the industrial manufacture. So apart from the laboratory preparation of nitric acid, we have the how it's prepared industrially. It's prepared by a method called Oswald process, and it's prepared by the catalytic oxidation of ammonia. 
uh, and then dissolving after that, after the products are formed, those products are dissolved in water. So some of the raw materials, you notice we always structure our uh, large scale processes like this because these are some of the tested areas. So the raw materials are, we have atmospheric air. Remember we are saying it's the oxidation of ammonia. So we need air. Then we have ammonia, which comes from harbor process. Some of the conditions for this process to occur is a catalyst. And in this case, we are using platinum rhodium, which is different from the one we are using, finely divided iron in harbor process. So this is platinum rhodium or platinum gives. So the air ammonia mixture is cleaned and purified, remove dust particles, which would poison this catalyst. So this is the summary of the reaction. So you start with the first reaction. So start with the compressor. So ammonia and excess air is slightly compressed. The mixture is then cleaned to remove particles, which would otherwise poison the catalyst, as we have said. And then it's passed into the heat exchanger, as you can see from the diagram. And then the heat exchanger, in the heat exchanger and catalytic uh, chamber, you notice these two chambers have been put together. There are some situations where we have put them together in the same box, so do not forget. So in the heat exchanger, the mixture is heated to about 900 degrees Celsius, which is different from before when we had 450 degrees Celsius, and then passed over platinum rhodium catalytic uh, chamber. So since this reaction is exothermic, it produces, the ammonia is oxidized. So we are talking about what happens in the catalytic chamber. It is oxidized to nitrogen, two oxide and steam is given off, as you can see from the equation. So ammonia reacts with oxygen to form nitrogen, two oxide, water and heat is given off. So this uh, having like, since the reaction is exothermic, as you are talking about in the upper process, uh, it is important for us to have me, me, uh, optimum temperatures um, that require uh, some catalytic temperature. We do not want this reaction to be too at too low temperatures. We want them to have uh, optimum temperatures, which have an economic uh, advantage. So the next step is in the heat exchanger. So we've already moved from um, the compressor to the heat exchanger. So products from the catalytic chamber. So we are here, the products in the catalytic chamber are again passed back through the heat exchanger and then hot, the hot gases are cooled and passed into the cooling chamber. So this, remember we said the purpose of the heat exchanger is to heat the reactant to optimum conditions and also it is used to cool the product. So after that, the products are taken to the cooling chamber where the nitrogen 2 is oxidized to nitrogen 4. So don't forget this is where the cooling occurs. You can see air is being bubbled into it for this purpose alone, for this oxidation purpose. So that is the equation, nitrogen 2 reacts with oxygen to form nitrogen 4 oxide. And remember, nitrogen 4 oxide are brown fumes. And then finally, it's taken, this uh, nitrogen oxide is taken to the absorption tower where the, it's, the absorption tower, there's a stream of hot water. It's important to remember it's hot water, not just water, when you are doing your explanation to form nitric five acid and nitrous acid. So a mixture of two acids are formed in the reaction. So as you can see, nitrogen four oxide reacts with water this is nitric acid and nitrous nitric acid is a nitric five acid nitrous acid is a nitric three acid so and so produced nitric three acid is oxidized this is the same place that is oxidized if you look at the flow chart you can see there is nitrogen 2 air and unreacted, nitrogen 4 air and unreacted nitrogen 2. So there is still air that is being bubbled. This purpose of this air in the absorption tower is not to oxidize the nitric 3 acid to nitric 5 acid, as you can see from the equation. 
Finally, the the nitric acid produced in this way is around 55 to 65% concentrated and it can be made even more concentrated by distillation process. So distillation process occurs where concentrated sulfuric acid is added to the dilute nitric acid. Heat produced when dilute sulfuric acid reacts with water vaporizes the nitric five acid. So that nitric five acid vapor is collected and condensed. And it's stored in dark bottles. So it's stored in dark bottles, as we said, to prevent decomposition, which occurs when exposed uh, to light. And then it also has very high concentration, especially the dilute nitric acid. It has a higher ions than the concentrated nitric five acid. The dilute nitric five acid is stronger, hence ionizes fully to yield more hydrogen ions than the concentrated nitric 5 acid. The dilute nitric 5 acid is ionic, whereas the dilute nitric 5 acid, which is concentrated, is molecular in nature. That is the reason why it is usually written liquid. When you look at the concentrated nitric acid, the state symbol would be liquid. And then also the dilute nitric acid is more ionized than concentrated nitric acid. We look at this question and then we come to an end on this topic of the subtopic before we go to properties. So we can see concentrated sulfuric acid and solid A. So we know solid A can be nitrate, potassium nitrate. And then cold water liquid B is nitric 5 acid. So under what solid A, we have already answered, under what condition does sulfuric acid react to solid A when it's heated? Remember we said heat must be there. What is the color of solid B? Yellow, pale yellow. And then what is the purpose of the water to condense the nitric acid fumes? Produced. That brings us to the end. So in the next lesson, you look at some of the properties of nitric 5 acid. So see you then.